hi, this is Matthijs, um, uh, the nuclear humanist, not the only one on the planet, luckily. Um, I was getting tired of being alone and, you know, always having to, you know, do stuff uh, by myself. And I wanted to find a friend who would like to, you know, help me grow the channel and talk about nuclear and, you know, have some conversations with which we can share with you guys. Um, so this is Alan Metzger. Alan Metzger is probably known by some of you. He is... Uh, uh, he, he is he, he is well known within the nuclear community i mean we we first saw each other in st louis i believe it's two or three years ago right now and uh, we've been in touch ever since he checks up on me when i'm uh, feeling down and you know i was like we have a real good thing going on here so why not you know do some collaboration and talk about nuclear and stuff and so here he is. Why don't you introduce yourself, Alan? Okay, well, I, uh, I'm Alan Metzger, and I live here in uh, Chicagoland in the U.S. Uh, we, uh, we have lots of nuclear here in the Chicago area and the northern Illinois area, so um, that's always, I've, I've always been fascinated by that. Um, but uh, the... Uh, I guess just to back up a little bit, um, you know, I'm I'm going on 62 here, so I'm not a spring chicken, but, but I'm not. Uh, I never think of myself as old, <laughs> but, um, <clears throat> but I do. Uh, we we have um, a, a nice house here in the suburbs of Chicago, the northwest suburbs. Uh, so we're kind of suburbanites. Uh, we really enjoy um, everything we've been blessed with. Uh, our you know two boys. They're in their late 20s and 30s, you know, a lot of whom got married last uh, last summer, and so we're looking forward to growing our extended family there. Um, we have uh, kind of adopted some uh, young men from Germany in their early 20s, uh, a year at a time, uh, through an exchange program called uh, CYBX. It's the, the two congreg congresses from uh, Germany and the U.S. Uh, exchange 75 students every year. and um, you know, it's funny, the ones that come here, you know, have to be fluent in English. The ones that go there don't have to be fluent in Germany. In <laughs> German. so, but some of them are. Um, it's a bit and, uh, asynchronous. <laughs> yeah, so they, they do learn, you know, a lot when they're there. But it's a cultural exchange. Um, and uh, so we've just greatly enjoyed, you know, uh, this is our fourth one that we're on now. So he's, you know, Biona is with us uh, <clears throat> until... Uh, uh, till the beginning of July, mm. um, and uh, so we've uh, we've enjoyed having them, but uh, we've also, you know, being a nuclear nuclear advocate, um, I've, uh, I've I've enjoyed talking to them about um, about nuclear energy and you know situation in Germany right now where they're shutting you know all of their plants down and you know burning a lot more coal as a result, and um, it's interesting because you know to a person they've all you know come around it to some. To, to some level of, of uh, you know, the idea at least of supporting nuclear energy, but but it's uh, it's hard for them because they've just been immersed in this culture that that devalues and and you know vilifies it, um, you know, so so roundly. I mean, it's you know to to the point where you know a, a well-educated PhD woman that you know leads that country, you know, goes along with it. I mean, you know, she knows better, but. But, but that's what she does because of the, the politics and the, and the popular opinion. I don't know which is the chicken and which, which is the egg there, but the, they're both so far down the road of, uh, of, of having um, you know, a lot of concerns about, about nuclear technology in general, nuclear power specifically. And, um, so that's been interesting. Um, my nuclear advocacy has been... Um, <clears throat> Uh, something that I kind of came around to uh, uh, probably seven or eight years ago, um, I got involved in uh, the idea of uh, lifter reactors, the liquid fluoride thorium reactors, which uh, uh, were, uh, have been popularized and, and, uh, and kind of introduced to the to the world really by a guy by the name of Kirk Sorensen, who is uh, a, an, an incredible advocate and 
and a very gifted speaker and presenter. He can he can talk about this stuff in a way that just you know makes you believe. And um, you know he's a rocket scientist that worked at NASA for a number of years. And literally um, a rocket the, scientist, right? Right. Actual <laughs> right. Um, and uh, so I my my younger son sent me a link to a video of his once, uh, and. Uh, <clears throat> I watched it. and I'm like, wow, this 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 really seems like a you know there's a lot of good ideas here, and we should you know we should probably be looking at this. And around the same time, you know, I started to get uh, more concerned about um, climate change, and you know, it wasn't nearly as as front and center as it is nowadays, um, you know, in the newspapers and and everything. But and and some of that's probably my perception because my bubble has a lot of talk about that. You know. Uh, you know the places that I hang out online and the people I talk to and things, but but um, it was it started to become more of a concern of mine. And, and essentially, what happened was um, I, I realized that there was great promise, <coughs> and there continues to be great promise in next generation nuclear technology for energy and other things. Um, and uh, and I'm still very bullish on that, but I'm also a realist. Um, and when I realized um, by virtue of you know hanging out with some very smart people online um, that had a lot of experience with you know, today's nuclear energy, that you know, the stuff that we use now, the stuff that we can build now, the stuff that we know uh, that we know works, um, <clears throat> you know that that makes up the you know the 400 some you know reactors that we have worldwide and the almost 100 that we have here in the U.S. Um, that's really really impressive stuff. Yeah, absolutely. and I didn't really realize just how good it was um, until I started to really, you know, dive into it. And you know, I'm kind of a technical guy. I've I've got an IT background, a double E, electrical engineering degree, and um, uh, and so I, you know, I enjoy you know reading and and uh, learning about about technical things. And you know, the more I learned, the more I realized we just need to build as much of this as we can. We need to stop shutting down the ones that are already running. And uh, and we need to um, pull out the stops on development of uh, next generation uh, designs that can improve on what we have, um, and uh, and and it just you know rock and roll with that. So um, I uh, I think um, you know my involvement <clears throat> kind of kind of really got kicked off um, uh, a. A couple of years ago, when uh, environmental progress was born, it's uh, Michael Stellenberger's um, pro-nuclear environmental organization, and that was um, you know the first work that was done there before the organization was even named um, was uh, here in Illinois. There were a couple of uh, nuclear plants, the Quad Cities plant and the Clinton plant. Um, we have six uh, sites, six nuclear power stations. Um, and 11 reactors among those, so um, all of them have two except for Clinton, just as one. And and those two, um, you know, those two you know, nuclear stations were uh, at risk of closing. And Exelon, who who owns them and runs them, um, essentially, you know, said we're going to close these if we don't, you know, if something doesn't change that that's going to help us, you know, I mean, rose the money on them, uh, and so. Um, <clears throat> So we we did you know work to get uh, some legislation passed. Um, it turned out to be this really big, I guess, kind of an omnibus bill. I mean, it was really it, it, it covered a lot of things, and uh, and uh, a lot of those things are things that I wouldn't normally you know be real enthusiastic about uh, uh, about supporting. But um, but a lot of residential solar, a lot of uh, efficiency. Um, some uh, some additional uh, things that have to do with uh, um, renewable energy at the grid level, um, and uh, and then buried deep within there, without even using the word nuclear much at all, is uh, these zero emissions credits. Yeah, exactly. Which allows the uh, allows the nuclear plants to uh, the owners of the nuclear plants to uh, demonstrate. I mean, they have to open their books mm. and have to demonstrate that uh, the you know these assets are, are uh, financially stressed, and uh, they have to do that with the you know, with the, you know, the the commission, the, the state commission that runs you know, power power commission. And so um, 
they, but we got that passed, and, and uh, you know that little varied bit that's that you know saved two nuclear plants from closing um, was by far the biggest thing in that bill, and you never read about it in the papers at all when you hear about the Future Energy Jobs Act, which is what yeah. it was. But that's um, a great job, man. I mean, come on. And so we had, <clears throat> um, you know, I went, went down to Springfield once and, and uh, you know, Michael testified in front of a subcommittee and, and we, you know, it was, uh, you know, there was a lot of interesting things. We learned a lot. I, you know, I got a chance to meet uh, Dr. James Hansen during that uh, episode of, of advocacy that we had here and we had a little roundtable discussion with him and uh, uh, Rachel Pritzker and, and Michael Schellenberger. Um, and we uh, we caught all that on on you know multiple video angles, and that's you know we've oh, used some of that nice. footage for for different things. But it was uh, and we opened it up to the public, and we tried to get as many people there as we could. And we you know we had a little crowd; it wasn't huge, but but um, uh, but that was kind of my introduction into into that that whole thing. And so so I've been just kind of trying to find my you know my my place where I can really plug in and make a difference. You know, since then, and I've, I've uh, you know continued to work, you know, to uh, to to understand things better, and to also you know just online, you know, talk about this and and uh, and work with people that have you know concerns about it or whatever, and you know try to you know block the trolls when they come along, and and uh, and and but but try you know try not to be a uh, you know you know and then you know, incredible jerk and just you know turn people off. Um, and try not to just you know blast facts out of them. Yeah, it's uh, you know it's such a it's such a, a, a gut level thing for so many people, and uh, and so you know just finding the right way to, to talk to each individual is I found that if I can actually talk to, to them one on one, I don't have too much trouble making my case, and 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 I don't have a bad track record with that at all. Um, and really to a person that the, the uh, you know, the, the the staff members for politicians that I've interacted with uh, have all come around to a, a much more positive view of the technology. Yeah, uh, just I talked to them, and, they, and they've never heard this before. Like it's 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 like nobody ever bothered to talk to them about nuclear energy before. Yeah. And so, so our our uh, you know the world is our oyster. We you know we have our work cut out for us to use all the you know yeah metaphors, you know the, all the all the that we, that we use for that. So, so now you see, so now you see why I want this guy around, right? I mean, he's, 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 he's to, to a great extent, he's like me. He, he is, he's come around. He, he, he got into nuclear through the gateway drug that I call molten salt reactors, lifter, thorium. Um, now, I think those are still relevant as well as Alan does, but I, I have become really impressed with uh with our modern day reactors you know just the gen 2s and the gen 3s that are in use today uh i mean and i've learned i i also came came to you know uh, be friends with heather matheson and uh, kirsten murray zeitz you know those two work at diablo canyon so i agree with alan on this um there was this discussion on, on Facebook earlier this day. Somebody was saying, yes, we need to focus on new reactors. And both Alan and I agree with that. But if the U.S. today would decide to say, okay, let's take Diablo Canyon, for instance, and we're going to blueprint that, you know, that reactor facility, and we are going to commit to like building six or seven more, I would, I would, basically you know start the fanfare and uh i I wouldn't go as far as walking naked through the street but i would be extremely happy Uh, and i said the same thing for the ap1000 for instance if uh the u.s would start uh, uh, preferably you know four unit power plants right if they if they would start building two or three of those that would make a huge difference it would you know, enable new learning curves to be established and and uh, create loads and loads of carbon-free uh, electricity that we can use for all sorts of uh, things. So, 
Alan and I, we're pretty much alike like that. And keeping existing plants open, which brings us to our next point, which is this uh, piece that was uh, uh, <clears throat> published on the World Nuclear News website, which says New England commits to value of nuclear, which comes a little late, uh, given the fact that they lost some reactors already, like Vermont Yankee. Uh, I don't know, is Pilgrim still operating? Yes, it is, right? It's still operating, but it's going to shut down. Yeah, exactly. Pilgrim, no. Pil Pilgrim is going, and so so. This is this is to me. This is good news. What what, what is your opinion on this stuff here? Um, I, I you know I take all the all the good news that comes my way. I try to savor it and, and have uh, you know I be you know celebrate it, be happy about it. Um, this is a situation where uh, the you know the, the the governors in those states have essentially said, you know, we we see the value in these plants, and we want to, you know, we want to, you know, not I impact the region by shutting them down when we don't have to. And you know, like you said, it's uh, it's a little bit, you know, there's there, there's a lot of water that's already past the the dam, and and yeah. you know we have to, <laughs> you know, we so so we're gonna. I, I'm pretty sure that Pilgrim is beyond the beyond saving. At this point, it's you know it would have to take a you know you know the feds would have to you know drop in and take it over or something like that at this point, and that's yeah. just not yet. So, um, and then you know nearby is you know Indian Point in New York State is in the same. It's teetering, situation. right? Huh? It's teetering. Yeah. Well, it's no. It, they said they're going to close it. And, oh, really? Um, there's and there's even though the um, I mean it was part of this this deal that was struck that in New York State where they've got some zero emission credits that have helped upstate nuclear plants to continue to operate but Indian Point um, you know there's just something about the fact that it's you know a little bit closer to the you know the, the metropolitan area that you know New York City you know that, that huge population area that they you know there's so many people that you know just kind of again their gut feel is that it's got to be, you know, it's, it's dangerous somehow because there's, you know, because you can detect tritium in a test well on the site. It's, right. It's, it, it's such minute things that have, uh, you know, that, that have been shown. And, and the NRC, you know, continues to give it, you know, I mean, it's, it's you know, the inspections that they do and and everything, you know, they pass and they, they it's, a, it's a safe place. But... It's but, uh, it's like it's like they it's like they said in Pandora's Promise when they are asking Gwyneth Gravens, you know, uh, about Vermont Yankee, but it's leaking tritium. They say, but it's leaking tritium, yeah. you know, and she says, yeah, it's leaking tritium, but you know, it yeah, it, the sky it's, leaks tritium. Yeah, mm -hmm. it, it it's harmless. Yeah. I mean, it it drops on her head every day without ever having been near a nuclear power plant, so. <sighs> <laughs> yeah, it's um, so you know we have that. Uh, they, they've got that going on, you know, nearby. But um, the you know Millstone plant in in Connecticut, um, yeah, just barely squeaked by because they they actually got some uh, they got some legislation passed that allowed it to uh, to participate in a long term power purchase agreement, which was what it needed. Yeah, uh, um, but then they couldn't get the ink to get. Onto the paper for for an agreement for that actual agreement, uh, up until it, I think it was the last week before they had to make a decision about it, and they but they did manage to do that, and so it looks like that'll you know continue to operate for at least another ten years now. That's a that's the length of the agreement, I believe. So, um, so, so in your estimation, how many how many of the uh, nuclear power plants are teetering? You know, uh, not not yet. Not yet at the you know at the point where people say we're going to close it down, but you know being under consideration. Do you have any idea how many that are? Um, I I don't know off the top of my head. There's a it's it's probably between twenty and thirty percent of mm. of units here in, uh, in in the U.S. that are at risk. I mean, we don't have any new ones. Yeah. You know, I mean, that's so all of the all of the plants that we have are you know. 30 or more years old, um, and uh, you know they've all been you know refurbished and and maintained and, and they run like tops. I mean they're just you know the 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 whole 
you know, I, I call the nuclear industry here in the U.S. I call it. The, it's like, and I don't want anybody to get you know triggered by this or anything. But it's like bettered life syndrome. <laughs> I mean, that, you know, that there's been so much negative publicity about yeah. nuclear energy that that the industry has basically, you know, they're they're ducking and covering. They're 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 keeping their heads down. And they just focused on, they're, they're like, well, if we just make ourselves a little bit more efficient, if we just, you know, reinforce the safety message. Yeah, you know, for, for better or for worse, right? So everybody, you know, really, really, really knows that we're safe because we just told them so many times. And yeah. it turns out backfiring, yeah. um, you know, because you tell somebody that, that often and, you know, they're going to say, well, you know, it must be really dangerous if you have to work that hard to keep it safe. Yeah. And then, you know, you have, uh, uh, and, and so they work on efficiency and they work on, uh, you know, uptime. You know, they have these marathon, you know, shutdowns where they do the refueling and they do all of the rest of the plant maintenance that they can, anything that they can defer to a time, you know, that's planned, which is most most of it, and sometimes all of it. Um, and they just, you know, they, they get this all done in, you know, five or six weeks often, and it's just, it's a 24-hour you know, huge team effort. You know, the project management is just amazing on something like that. What yeah. they have to do, you know, what they do do, um, and so as a result, you know, since Three Mile Island, you know, when that thing happened so back in the in the, you know, in the seventies, we we had, um, uh, you know, I don't know the I mean the the capacity factor, which is you know how much of the time the the plant is actually up and producing it at its at its stated capacity, one hundred percent. Yeah, um, that was like you know 60, 65 percent or something like that. It was pretty low. Exactly. Um, relative, it's more more like what you see for a coal plant. Or and something. and now they're over a hundred percent in some cases. And now, it's, yeah, in some cases <laughs> you're actually you know producing more than your nameplate capacity. Like Peach Bottom, and, for instance. Right. And uh, so so and and if you look at all of them, they're together. Um, <clears throat> you know, it's uh, between ninety and ninety five percent. I mean, yeah. It's just there. Up all the time. That's amazing, and, isn't it? And they've got fewer units now than they have had for quite some time because they've never, they, they have not been adding, you know, they added one, the you know, TDA added one unit that was partially built and they finally finished it. A Wasn't that Watts ago. Bar? Yeah, yeah, so yeah. so they've got, that's the only unit that's 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 newly finished. It's an old design and an old unit, but, but it's newly started, so. Yeah. But that, you know, <clears throat> besides that one, we haven't gotten any new ones, and and uh, so, but even with the ones that we've shut down being gone, um, the actual amounts of electricity that we've generated with nuclear, it you know, set a record last year. Yeah, that's so, that's um, that's that's what we can see in point four. U.S. nuclear yeah. is dying, but it produced more electricity in twenty eighteen than ever before. So <clears throat> basically, it's it's operational excellence. That pushes, and it's underappreciated. It, you know exactly. It, it not appreciated. Yeah. And it's you know, really, you know, I mean, my, you know, I I love all of my friends that work in the industry. I love all of the people that work in the industry. They they do a phenomenal job. But what what they really suck at is is, is PR communications. <laughs> yeah. They just don't they don't do a really good job with that. And the NEI tries to help out, you know, the Nuclear Energy Institute. And, but don't you and don't you have a, don't you have the idea that it's becoming a little bit better? I mean, I, I do. Um, I think there's a recognition. Um, you know, certainly we've seen legislation. I mean, you know, in order to get anything, you know, passed that you know like that, you, you, you know, somebody has to like it, right? Yeah, and, exactly. Uh, so, you know, we we have a lot of work to do, but but I do think that there's some uh, some so good signs, and you know, I'm I'm bullish on it. But I mean, you know, I mean, nuclear is going to be the way that we power this planet. I mean, and I, and I don't no think doubt there's any, about it. There's there's not really uh, a question in my mind about that. But it's like who you know who's going to lead that charge? You know, where are the you know, you know, the key? I mean, who's going to get the business? I mean, that's you know, I mean, just thinking about that way. Yeah. I mean, that's one, one of the ways that you could. You, you could approach, um, you know, my, you know, my friends on the on the right end of the political spectrum. You know, they're that that's going to turn their crank more than you know talking about climate change. Yeah, right? yeah, 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 yeah. I, fi uh, I we, figured as much as well. Like a couple of months ago, I was like, you know, and and I mean, climate change is still my 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 focal point. Why I do what I do, 
but I started realizing that I, I need more. You know, we need more. I mean, we cannot just let ourselves uh, be uh, kowtowed, kowtied. But what, what is it? Kowtowed, right? <laughs> but just a single issue. I mean, we need to become <laughs> like like they like like is the the trend right now. We have to become more diverse in our approaches i mean there's allies all over the place and we shouldn't just you know try to alienate one ally for the sake of having you know laser focus on on just one issue i mean um, I, 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 I i i even though i'm left you know in my heart of hearts i'm a left leaning guy I do understand that there's some politicians and some ideas on the right end of the spectrum that, you know, can do good as well. And that, you know, politicians on the right side uh, are correct from time to time and that we have to work with them. I mean, with that. Yeah. And that's, for instance, we had a, a we had a, an election a couple of days ago. And I felt that one of those extreme right guys was going to win. And he won. He became the biggest in the Senate. And I was like, so what would the natural response be? The natural response would be to create the counterbalance on the left side, right? But I was like, no, that's not going to work in this case. So I picked the one of those central parties, you know, those, those, those who ideologically occupy the center and mm -hmm. are, you know, status quo kind of guys, uh, slow progress, you know, they, they don't want to rush things to revolutionize stuff. They just want steady evolution, right? Steady evolution. Mm -hmm. and, and, and I was like, no, those are the guys I need to bet on. Because they are going to, you know, rein the left and the right in and maintain that stability. And I believe that that's, that's something that the U.S. is going to need as well. And I think that nuclear can be a unifying, a unifying issue since it garners support from both mm -hmm. Democrats and Republicans. So... Yeah, but we have a lot of work to do, so... Oh, absolutely. Uh, <laughs> You know, Absolutely. I, you do that, and it's yeah, the, it is a thing that drives me most crazy. Is I'm you know I'm a lefty. I'm you know sometimes you you know might call me a socialist even, <laughs> but I you know I you know I I I, I love people and I love the planet and I want to take care of both of those. So yeah, but the the, kind of the problem the problem right. with calling yourself a socialist in the U.S. is that they don't understand the nuance yep. between communism and socialism. They don't understand that there's like. 10 stops in between you know from yeah. the from the middle all the way to the left there's still 10 stops to go until you become a communist yeah. but in, in the u.s is calling yourself a socialist tantamount to being a communist <laughs> so, or I, I would call myself a social democrat which is you know again two stops <laughs> further to the middle <laughs> from <laughs> so but, yeah. but Here's here's one of the things I wanted to note, and 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 that's uh, that's concerning the AP one thousand. So, right now mm -hmm. Vogel is at least uh, going forward. VC Summers is shuttered. I mean, it, right. that might be the biggest mistake that the U.S. ever makes at this point. Um, I mean, I I would wish that the U.S. would start t building ten of these tomorrow, but. There's no chance in hell, right? I mean, well, it's you know that this is this is a thing that uh, that I that, that I've kind of thought about with respect to the to the Green New Deal, which is um, the you know it, it's a it's a it's a, just a resolution at this point and in in the House of Representatives here, and but it's it's a it, it's very broad, it's very non-specific. Um, but uh, but it it it's essentially and it doesn't just talk about energy right so so the but, but the thing is that it's 
it's work. What they are trying to do is build a movement. Yeah. Right. And uh, and so, you know, in in that sense, I'm I'm really 100 percent behind it. I mean, I don't disagree with, you know, really anything that's in there as an individual, you know, uh, goal that we should have. Um, you know, I might not have, you know, positioned it in the same way that it's been positioned. Um, and I certainly wouldn't have implied or or stated that. We should be looking at 100% renewable energy for that for the energy part of it, um, but uh, and that's not in in the resolution at all. It's just, it's just clean energy is what they talk about. But um, but the, you know the whole that whole crowd is is the 100% renewable crowd. Yeah. You know, so but the thing is that if you get the mil, the movement going, and uh, you know Dave Roberts on Vox has talked about this. He's like you know you got. I mean, that you kind of do the politics first and get some traction there, and then you could start filling in the policy details. and And so I'm, you know, I'm, I'm cautiously confident that we can do that, and and that we can do that in a way that that, that, that leverages the things that we know work, which which you know, nuclear is certainly in that category. Yeah. Um, and have some healthy skepticism towards the things that you know have not worked. But which you know probably have their place, um, you know, here and there. I, you know, I'm not against renewables, but I'm against using them where they don't make sense to be used. And oh, that's, exactly. And most places on the grid, they don't really make much sense, you know. <laughs> yeah. So, so you know, that's I mean, that's that's how I, you know, that's how I hedge my bets when I when I talk about it. Yeah, exactly. Uh, uh, but but basically, you know, having that um, having that in place, then we can, you know, and and that whole. You know, if you read the resolution, it's 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 so much focused on you know, how are we going to take care of society, how are we going to take care of ourselves, and provide jobs for people, and you know provide energy for people, and 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 don't you know in, in, I mean do do engage the the you know the the indigenous people in the different places where we do things, mm -hmm. um, and give them a voice, and uh, and and give you know give women a voice, and and give. You know, let all people be as engaged as they want to be engaged, and you know, get buy-in from them all and have them all. And that's you know, I, I love that. I mean, you know, sure. But but, the, but it's it's very hard for me as an engineer, as a te technical guy, as somebody that's that's passionate about nuclear technology. It's very hard for me not to look at that whole thing and say, you know, you guys are just leaving out nuclear, and that's that's just a, a you know. And that's a, that's a horrible thing, and, and you know, therefore, just write them off. You know, it's it's hard for me not to do that, and so so that's you know, I, I think we all have our little you know, our our, our struggles, our our crosses to bear, whatever you know. Yeah. Um, you want to whatever metaphor you want to use there, but but we, you know, that that we all have things that we need to work on personally to to, to, to be more effective and to and to and to ultimately, you know allow ourselves together with everybody else to get more stuff done yeah you know that needs to be done and uh, you know I mean my uh, you know I'm an Episcopalian and my you know my faith is is it informs that in, in my life I you know it, it's you know Jesus was the example that I want to follow and Jesus didn't you know I mean he was he, he loved everybody and he especially loved the people that society cast aside Right, I mean, he, he would he would seek them out and he would talk to them, you know, to the and, and, and engage with them in ways that that uh, you know just pissed off, you know, the powerful people. <laughs> right, right. And 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 you know, we just have you know a, a whole bunch to learn from that. And and uh, but at the same time, there's you know, people want to do good things. I think most people, you know, generally speaking, want to do good things, and sometimes. They don't do that because they're afraid. Sometimes they don't do that because they don't know any better. Sometimes they don't do that because, uh, you know, they 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 haven't got the, the you know the, the abilities or they don't think they do. And, yeah. And so those are all areas where I think we can engage, um, you know, our, our fellow citizens of the planet. Um, and uh, you know, so I you know that's yeah, I'm not yeah that's that's interesting. Well, interesting. That that just you know that all this stuff just constantly going through my head yeah exactly so it's interesting that you frame it that way because i i got a comment from a friend who said that people might find it strange that i as a european would be commenting on stuff like the green new deal 
and it's exactly like you say i have, i don't feel compelled to just you know talk about stuff that happens in the netherlands or in europe for that matter but since climate change knows no bounds and since you know uh the human condition is something which is spread all over the planet i feel compelled to you know uh, talk about whichever subject i want to talk about because i want to do good in a general sense and uh, my laser focus on the us is quite simply because they're the most powerful and i think they can enact the most significant change in this regard right so and and uh, apart from you know being able to communicate with you guys is easier it's it's much easier for me to communicate with an american than with a french person for instance it's so yeah. so right. strange or with a spaniard or with somebody from italy i mean you know so so that's why i uh why i tend to you know get english people canadians and americans rather than germans and french people even though they are in my backyard so uh yeah. yeah. So that Green New Deal, I mean, did you see the 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 uh, Murkowski article? Yeah. And uh, you know, she's kind of a, you know, when it comes to that sort of thing, she's kind of a centrist. I mean, she's Yeah. she's a Republican, right? And uh, yeah. you know, I, you know, my you know, of late, you know, my thinking is that uh, anybody that's still willing to call themselves a Republican in the US is is, you know, very suspect <laughs> for me. Mm. Um, and and you know, in a lot of areas, she would be, you know, for me. But, but uh, on, on the other hand, she's, um, you know, she's talking about climate change. She's willing to do that, and she's talking about, um, and you know, she's she's a Republican. So generally speaking, in this country, what that means is they're they're not going to have the same concerns about nuclear energy that uh, that, that a lot of people on the left side of the spectrum do. Yeah. Um, and uh, so that's that's good. I mean, and and you know, so we're, you know, she's. I think she's kind of. She, I don't think she's rejecting the Green New Deal as such, so much as she's saying, um, like you know, my gut reaction to it, which is that, you know, we we do need to do some things, but this is not a good way to try to get them done, and and you know, this is not a good way to, to uh, you know, we they need to be bipartisan enough to be survivable um, yeah. across administrations and. You know changes in a in a power the power structure here. Yeah, exactly. So and that because it's a long view, right? I mean, it's, it's, yeah. it's, it's that's you know. that's what I say always with the political pendulum. You know, swinging and crushing oh, whatever. Not. You know, it's 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 no use to build hyper partisan oh. legislation because it will be crushed <laughs> by the next political swing. And the you know the best way forward in my eyes is to build something with bipartisan support, strong bipartisan support that will, you know, survive the test of time. And that's 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 yeah. because I wrote I wrote this article on the fourth generation blog in which I basically say, well, I think that the Green New Deal, despite liking aspects of it, is that an arrival because even, even because it's just not built to survive the test of time. It it, it won't Right. And, and if we we think about it in, a, in, in in as a as as legislation, then th I I don't think basically anybody would disagree with you. I mean I, I think, but 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 if you look at it as a, a way to 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 build a lot of momentum, um, to get people you know from, get, to to get them to start to in, internalize the idea that we have to do some really big things. Yeah, absolutely. And that's you know, and 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 to be okay with talking about those big things, um, you know, I, I I think to that extent, I think it's you know, we we have to do that. We have to we have to talk more about that, and we have to do more. With that it's you know, I mean, as as ham handed as the, as as the you know the the introduction of it was, um, you know, it was just <laughs> it was you know, you, we we saw these you know frequently asked questions documents that were kind of semi leaked and. Yeah, yeah we just look at been you know written by a high schooler. I mean, and not not to diss any high schoolers, but yeah, but it, you know, it, it was clearly not somebody that was 
you know, really experienced, you know, with this stuff, and you know, it wasn't professional looking at all. And so, you know, you had all these, you know, all this misfiring, but, but e even with all of that, it's still like, it, it generated a level of, of discussion that we haven't had here. And, yeah. And that we need to have. And, you know, it's, it, it is very, you know, hyper-partisan right now, um, and uh, we have to work on that. But this is where I think, you know, we as nuclear advocates can, can really help um, because, you know, it, if you set all this stuff aside and all you did was say, okay, let's, let's agree that we're going to build, you know, 10 nuclear reactor units somewhere in the U.S. We're going to, you know, we're going to give, you know, we're going to have a, a you know, a, a, a you know a, a commission to to pick some sites and um, and give them you know a few months to do that and then we're going to commit we're going to absolutely 100 percent commit to doing yeah. that and you know bootstrap the the supply chain bootstrap the labor force bootstrap just the idea that we can do this yeah you know I mean so many people are just like well you know we we just can't build these things in the U S that's that's such bullshit. Yeah, I mean, we could build anything that we want to build. But, I, mean, we have but to... I have to add, you have to make them Pickering or Darlington scale. I mean, you have to make them like four units or six units. Yeah. yeah. Be because, because, first of all, you centralize your building stage. I mean, everybody, all the components go to the same place. And, 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 and I mean, it, it's just much better than just building one or two. Uh, that that's one of the things that I that I that I would that I'm really passionate about. That 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 if, yeah, you, if you want to do this, make it a minimum of four, like they did at uh, in in the United Arab Emirates, for instance, uh, yeah. Bakara or what is it called? I mean, right. each they start with building one unit, and then they start the preparations for the next unit, and the preparations for the next unit, and the preparations for the next unit. And you can immediately you get benefits because you're doing the stuff with one and you can, you know, do it more efficiently with the second because you learned something at the first that you might do differently yep. next time that will, you know, save money. And I mean, it's yeah, I don't I don't get why they didn't do that with VC Summers and Vogel, for instance. Well, I mean, and in, in, in both of those cases, they, you know, they, they did commit to and start building, you know, two units. I mean, yeah. they already had, uh, I mean, part of that was probably just the market was not going to be there. Yeah, that's for, true. Or energy. And so it's, it's, and here's where I would look at it differently is, is it, you know, because I look at it from an emissions point of view, right? Yeah. Almost exclusively. That's what I, that's what I care about. And so, you know, you have, you, I mean, they've already got two units that are operating at Vogel, and those are going to continue to run for a long time. Yeah. Um, they're building two more, so it's going to be four total. Yeah. Um, but if That's they great. build more, you know, they might not have a place to ship that electricity, and without without shutting down a, a what for them would be a profitable fossil fuel plant. And yeah. So exactly. Two or three or four, right? And and so you know, Southern is going to look at that, and this is why. This is why you can't let the utilities make those decisions. You can't let the market make those decisions because yeah. they're not going to look at the No, 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 we, yeah. You know. It's profit margins and... Yeah, and so, you know, it's... The, uh, profit takes, uh, the profit takes them to the fossil fuel plant, so it's that simple, or to the wind farms and solar farms if they get the credits for it and the, and the, yeah. and the, and the sell guarantee because that's one of those things. In in the U.S., it it doesn't happen, right? Uh, wind curtailment and solar curtailment, right? Almost. Well, it doesn't happen very often because most of them get production tax credits, and yeah. so they get money if they produce, even if the energy is not required, right? Yeah. So, you know, they so that means that the you know there's two ways that they get you know that they get paid. This is very simplistic and probably wrong in some ways, but <laughs> but, but you know the the wind. You know, like the wind generators in in in, Il, in Iowa, for instance, which yeah. is next door to Illinois here, um, you know, they get production tax credits, and so they get money when they produce a kilowatt hour, a megawatt hour, you know, no matter what. And so even if you know the 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 ISO, so the the system operator, which is the grid operator for that area, even if they send a pricing signal that says 
I don't need any more electricity right now, and in fact, I'm going to charge you a penny a kilowatt hour or something like that to put it on the grid because I really need somebody to shut down because there's not enough demand right now. Yeah. And that's how, that's kind of how they you know, manage it on, on a on a you know on a on a macro scale. That's how they do it, right? And so so they so they say you know we're gonna we're gonna charge your money to put your electricity on the grid. Um, the wind operators will continue to operate because they still get their production tax credits and it's still a profitable thing for them to yeah. do that, right? Yeah. And so for sale, they lose money, right? And and uh, but but you know across the river at the Quad Cities nuclear plant, yeah, you know, the substation right there next to it, that, that and there's a bunch of you know transmission that goes across the river, the Mississippi River, and um, and it comes from. You know the the wind farms in in Iowa that and there's nobody using that energy in Iowa. I mean, there it's a it's a it's not a highly populous state. Yeah. Um. And and where particularly where those are, they're out on farms, right? I mean, you know, agricultural farms, and so they're out in the middle of nowhere, and so they they have to send their energy somewhere. Right. So you like comes across the river. It happens to land right next to you know where the where the Quad Cities plant is, and the Quad City, you know, in the nuclear plant can't curtail easily because it's a 30 40 year old design you know i mean it's it's and, it, and if they shut that thing down or they back it off it takes them like you know eight hours to get it back to production yeah 100 uh, percent. and so so they so they have to pay to put their electricity on the grid like an hour a day or something like that i mean yeah. it's you know and you know I mean, and there's not real documentation of this kind of thing really anywhere i mean you have to talk to people at exelon and and others to get some kind of a feel for that, but that's you know that that's kind of the way that it has worked, and that's that part of the reason. Yeah, that exactly. You had such that that those that that plant was slated to close because it was it, you know they got charged for not shutting the thing down, and if they did shut it down, they you have extra fuel costs because the fuel burn up doesn't work as well, and they lose all of that extra revenue for you know when they have to. When it's not ramped all the way back up again, you know they're not generating as many megawatt hours, and so they don't get paid as much. It's crazy, and isn't it, it? We have it backwards. Time. It's totally backwards. Yeah. So, so that's you know, there's just you know, I, I say on Twitter a lot. I say you know, the electricity markets suck. Right? Yeah, and, and it's you, and it's pure cannibalism as well because this is just. Yeah. This is just one low carbon energy source cannibalizing on another low carbon energy source. I mean, it it yeah, just it, makes no sense. It makes yeah, absolutely market, no sense. That's, that's the thing that we have to you know continue to to just you know pound into you know the the uh, you know the people that are you know willing to listen to people like me. No, energy markets are stupid. I mean, it, you know, they they never get us what we really need. Yeah, and. We have, we, we have to decide at some point that we have to plan some things centrally and, you know, coordinate all of this stuff so that we get the outcomes that we need. Yeah. And if we don't do that, it's 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 going to continue to just be haphazard. I mean, you know, everybody thinks that a kilowatt hour is, is cheaper with wind and solar than it is with anything else, and it's mm, not. No, it's simply it's, not true. I know. I know. I've like, done a, a thousand calculations, and I mean... It, it, there's so many factors. If you just look at it from a technological perspective and, and leave markets out of it, you know, if you leave the market out of it, out of the equation, and you're not going to do discount rates and all that kind of nonsense, then yeah. actually nuclear is, is a lot cheaper than the renewables are. But it's, it's artificial market pressure that reverses that paradigm. So yeah. I, I, I am very frustrated with that. I'm very frustrated. Yeah, so, um, you know, we, we, uh, we continue to kind of fight that battle here in Illinois. You know, like, I mean, I mentioned that we, we got the Future Energy Jobs Act. Uh, uh, yeah, I, you know, I say we. I mean, you know, my personal, you know, contrib contribution to that was, was pretty, pretty small. In, in the end, but but uh, but you know there was some visibility that was there because of people like me that that, that worked on it and uh, you know and Exelon did a good job of uh, you know lobbying for the stuff that they needed 
and they were willing to be, you know, they want to be, you know, in the background, right? They don't want to be in the foreground, and so, so all of the stuff that 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 legislation did was was, you know, kind of big news, and um, the the nuclear quote unquote bailout, the nuclear the relief that those plants got so that they could stay open, yeah, you know, that resulted in, in in more emissions reductions and. Than, than everything else in that bill will for 10 years, right? I mean, or yeah, more. exactly. But, but you know, most people don't really realize that. So we've got another round of those kind of things, and we've got, you know, we're very democratic, you know, leading here in the state of Illinois because most of the population is in the big population center up, up north yeah. here by Chicago. Um, and, uh, but the rural parts of Illinois are, are, are pretty right leaning. You know, there are many Republican districts that are, uh, you know, they're big. They're, geographically, they're big, but uh, but they're um, in and around the state. You know, so they're the southern Illinois folks are low population density. Generally. Yeah, yeah. So, but um, but so we've got another uh, because we are heavily democratic. We've got another uh, clean energy jobs act. It's called, um, and that's something that um, I'm working on with my representatives. But it's uh, and they're both co-sponsors. My senator and my congressman both are. Yeah, but they are. You know, that thing says, uh, you know, we should have carbon, um, uh, you know, zero carbon generation by 2030. Um, so, and, Whoa, you know, right. right now, you know, we're, we're well over 50% because of our, only because of our nuclear plants, exactly. right? Yeah. Because that's where, because half our power comes from there. So, yeah. you know, so their idea is, well, we can, you know, make up the rest of that with, you know, some renewables in, in the next 12 years and, you know, we're not, we're not going to do that, but, but I don't have too much of a problem with that. But what it also says is that they want to be 100% renewable by 2050, nah. which is, at this point, um, if they don't renew any of the licensing for any of the nuclear plants, um, they will, none of them will be running by then. So, exactly, um, yeah. But even if get extended, you know, the last one to be, to need relicensing, I think, is 2034. So, 2054 would be when they would get a license until... For, for, for that one. Um, that's uh, that's what always bothers me. We're talking about relicensing, and relicensing is absolutely a necessity. I mean, keeping existing power plants open is, yeah. is, is a no-brainer to me. But we're not talking about building new ones, right? Right. And so, that's, so, so I think, that, and I think even, my, even my reps, as much as I've had a chance to talk to them about this, are thinking about this as well. And these are old plants. We have to shut them down. Yeah. And so... so, so they don't have to be shut down, and they and they can be relicensed, and they can be refurbished, you know, indefinitely. Exactly. And, and until concrete starts to give out, which you know, I mean, that, those are you know, the reactor pressure vessel is probably the thing, right? I mean, at, at some point, you know, that probably has to be replaced. But even even in situations like that, we should be planning for what's the next thing that's going to be there, exactly. right? What's what yeah. are we going to build on site? And so we have a moratorium in Illinois on, on new nuclear. Should be you know, so lifted. I've, so I've got to work on that. Um, but, uh, you know, and, and we have another, um, uh, there, there's yet another bill. <laughs> so it's called the uh, the uh, yeah, Clean Energy Protection Act, I think it is. Yeah. Is that uh, the 2861 I, thing or? I, I am, uh, I, you know, I get confused about which is which. Uh, <laughs> but uh, it's, it, they're, they're all amendments to this, this, this large. Um, yeah. Piece of legislation that basically tells us what how we have to, you know, uh, how we have to allocate the energy that we, you know, that we allow to be purchased and used in the state. Um, section and, uh, section very, five. Very hard to read through these things, but yeah, but, uh, essentially what this is, it's a it's an excellent sponsored, you know, and written uh, amendment that allows uh, that that essentially provides. It provides a way for the. Um, it, it dictates that the that Illinois takes over responsibility for the power purchasing in the state and All takes right. that away from uh, PGM and MISO, who are the two ISOs that work in the state. So, so in other words, we now can tell them what the mix is that we want, and also, of course, in there then is that we need it to be you know clean um, and not renewables. Uh, Specifically, but but, but clean, and um, so I, you know, I really need the help of somebody that can read this kind of legislation and help interpret it for me. And so, yeah, you know, there's 
that are environmental progress that, that, that have helped with, with that in the past and and uh, so um, uh, I, I, I'd like to I'd like to understand that a little bit better but you know the bottom line that I'm telling my reps is you know don't allow 100% renewable language to to be you know to, to be kept in any yeah. bill low That's carbon zero carbon is but, fine right so so keep your eye on the prize yeah and the prize is um, what uh, you know what what I mean the objectives that we need to yeah. be focused are emission reductions reduction. basically Mission reductions, um, you know, we want to, you know, pay attention. We don't want to tank the economy if we don't have to. We don't want to hurt people if we don't have to. Um, yeah. But generally. So, so do you ever bring up, do you ever bring up uh, high temperature reactors with these people and tell them about, you know, the possibility of fuel synthesis and such? Well, only, only a little bit. And I, you know, it's, it's uh, what I think is the case. What I believe is that if somebody is willing to accept nuclear as we have it today, all of those things are going to be easy sells for them. Yeah. Uh, uh, but I but I also can, I, I think it's important to use that as a leverage point where we say, all right, you know, you, you think that, that you know, if, let's, let's say that your renewables are going to be able to provide our electricity going forward. You know, there's another two-thirds of the energy economy that you're not even talking about there. That, yeah. That, you know, so how are you going to, um, you know, I mean, you, you can electrify some of those things, and particularly the transportation sector has some ways, you know, some, some approaches that can do that pretty effectively. But um, but even even the things that we know how to do are, are, are just huge projects. And so, you know, if we want to replace our infrastructure, you know, of, of you know, trains, and cars with electric, I mean, that's just, it's a huge lift. And so yeah. we, can, we can work on that and we can do that and we don't have to, you know, think of it as an all or nothing proposition, you know, but there are going to be places where the energy density of liquid fuels is just going to trump everything for a long, long time. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And so we need to start thinking about what can we do. That's like you know, long truck hauls, long truck right. hauls. I mean, those kinds of things. Right. We're not going to put electric wires above the interstates in no. the U.S. over, you know, across the state of Wyoming. Yeah. <laughs> we're right, and and we're probably not going to get trucks that have enough battery to really do that on a long haul. Yeah, exactly. Um, although, you know, unless we change the way that we, you know, that we operate those trucks and maybe, you know, maybe make some of them autonomous, whatever. But. The bottom line is that uh, there are, are lots of opportunities for decarbonation, de decarbonization yeah. that are not just making more electricity to be clean, right? And and uh, so that's where high temperature reactors, you know, really can uh, can, can can play a very key role, where we can, uh, you know, we can we can you know crack water, we can we can you know, do things that that you know. That, that require in, industrial process heat that's that's way hotter than what we have in a in a pressurized water reactor. Oh yeah, I mean those things um, go you know what a maximum of three hundred yeah. degrees or something like that. Yeah. I mean that's a maximum. Yeah. High temperature that's reactors a, might go up to nine hundred, maybe a thousand, depending on how they are designed. Yeah. But right, so you know your aluminum plant is going to need you know just a shitload of energy. Yeah. To, continue to do its job and we either have to give them you know the uh, enough electricity to, to use resistive heat to, to create that what they need or we and then that has that has to be reliable yeah absolutely you know? and if that's a, that stuff gets interrupted i mean it's just it, you can't you can't power good. you can't power that with solar panels right so you can't power society on intermittent energy so um you know and the, and the you know, batteries are not really. A, you know, no, and that's and that's one of the things. That's one of the things many people tend to forget, or brush over, or just don't consider at all, is that yes, you you can build a house that will function on solar power. I mean, that's possible. You can build a an office space that functions on solar power. No problem. I think that's possible. Let's the there, there's plenty of stuff we can do. But the fact that we can do that makes people believe that we can run a soda can factory on solar power 
yeah. or you know a steel manufacturing plant or you know some kind of a you know if you want to make fertilizer a friend of mine works at the uh, a friend of mine works at the company that creates fertilizer in the Netherlands it's called OCI nitrogen and it's a, it's an international company and they are the third no wait wait a second they are the the biggest emitter of 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 uh, you know uh, CO, they are the biggest emitter of CO2 in the Netherlands and they make fertilizer. And yeah, for, right. I mean, if you want to do agriculture, you have to have fertilizer. Yeah. <laughs> so, yep. and I was talking about, I was talking to him about, you know, how much energy do you use? He says the most of all. He says, <laughs> we, we, use, we use the highest volume of gas of all the industry in the Netherlands to make fertilizer. So, yeah. I mean... And that's it's a big problem, and, <laughs> and it, you know there are all these opportunities, um, and the, and, the, the, and again, this is something where I think we can bring, you know, all sides together to talk about. Is it. we have all of these things that we need to do, and you know you could you know it, regardless of what you think about climate change and what you think about emissions, it's still a benefit to do this with the most energy dense source that we have. Uh, absolutely. It, and it's and it's potentially going to be. I think it's going to be be demonstrated as being a very cost effective way to do it. Maybe the most cost effective way to do it. And and um, you know that I means something like a you know a, a fee on carbon is going to make a difference there um, to accelerate that. Um, yeah. And I do you know I, I support that as well. But but uh, but, it, but even without that, I mean eventually, you know. I, I firmly believe that, and I think it's been shown that that the, you know, over the long haul, the cost of nuclear is always the best. I mean, yeah, it's, it's, it, it it's is. always in the end because the because because the you you have a long game there, right? I mean, it's you know you, you build a nuclear facility, and that's going to be there for sixty or eighty or hundred years it's, or more. It, it's all about time. It's it, it, Exactly, it's all about time. It's a longevity. It's longevity. The fact that it runs for sixty, eighty, perhaps even one hundred years, and then it's the fact that it runs for ninety percent of the time, <laughs> yeah. opposed to thirty percent of the time or twenty percent of the time, which is, by the way, which is pretty optimistic, because when you look at, for instance, I analyzed the German. Uh, renewable energy production uh, I got all the data from Fraunhofer I emailed them I said listen you have all these nice graphs I want to recreate them but I want to you know be able to manipulate them in my own way and I got the data from them they they sent me a beautiful excel file and wow. I I picked it apart and it turns out that solar has has less than 10 percent capacity factor in Germany yeah and when... yeah, it's, yeah, so I, I, um, I, I actually have an appointment at ten o'clock. Oh, that's great! Surprised. No worries. Um, we, we're, we've uh, we've we're... been we've been going on for an hour, so um, well, you've got some material here to work with. <laughs> yeah. So so let us let us just finish this. Um, I hope that you know the viewers enjoyed what we did here today. You know, this is a, let's call it a pilot. You know. Um, <laughs> Pilot episode, right? A pilot episode. I, I really, 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 really love talking to you. I hope that you know yeah. the viewers enjoy this as well. And I really, really, really want to do this more often. Yeah, I, um, I, I have always enjoyed our chats, and it's always something that I, I find that I learn from them, and, uh, and that's why I think it's important for all of us that are, you know, kind of in this little, you know, nuclear advocacy bubble. bubble. Yeah. To, uh, and it and it we have, we have to you know recognize it as a bubble and and and, and understand that and 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 make sure that we don't get you know Isolated. caught in a in a trap because of that. But yeah, but we need to think outside that bubble you know as as much as we can. But but it's uh, at the same time we you know we need the energy from each other. That, yes, uh, that it's it's no good to isolate ourselves. Right. Yeah. yeah, so so I appreciate uh, I I always appreciate the the opportunity to chat and uh, and I'm looking forward to doing that uh, nice. a lot more. Nice. Hey, Alan, thank you for uh, being here today. 
Okay, um, my friend. I'm going to sign off. Thank you all for watching, all right. and have a nice day. All right. <laughs>